whatever they do that for. Guess what, guys? That's right. Finally, it lives. It breathes. It crawls on its belly like a snake. The 1950 Silver Tone Junk Pile. We've been working on this one for I don't know how long. However many episodes are in that playlist up there. And it is D-U-N done. It started off a rack. And we pretty much finished that job off by uh, what all I did done, did it to it. Um, so, I'm going to run through this thing on the Guitar Susan. You haven't seen that episode yet. Hey, forget Mom and Grandma's Spice Rack. You're fixing to see a Guitar Susan. I'm going to give you a, a link to an episode right up there, right about now. If it's not there, I haven't released it yet. Do the math on this one. But let's go through this thing. And I got a big surprise for you at the end. And no, it's not how much money I lost salvaging this pitiful wreck. Let's run through this thing quick. All right, guys, let's start off at the least exciting place, and that is the back. Um, we filled some holes. There were some tuners in here before. It wasn't the original uh, kind. Remember, we took this off the Birdhouse guitar playlist right up there right about now. A Fender guitar that we acoustic we dug out of the trash can somewhere on Laurel Canyon. Don't go looking for it. It's gone. But anyway, this guitar has a roundy neck with... Um, typical 1940s, 50s. It doesn't have the pronounced V-neck like some of the earlier ones. There are so many cracks on this thing on the back. Remember, the neck was loose. Let's zoom out a little bit now. The other zoom out. Thank you. Uh, there were so many cracks on this thing. I think there's a crack holding it all together right here. Back was pretty much off. But... We got it pinned together pretty well, and um, that's pretty much it for the back, except for that fancy sticker right there that nobody asked me for, but goes ahead and covets anyway. Let's turn this thing around. Okay, here we are on the front. Let's do a ooh, nice smooth pan to get the whole thing in before we get down into the nitty gritty details. Wasn't that smooth camera work? High five, bro. High five right here, brother. Okay, we're zoomed in. You gotta love that Art Deco stamped on silver tone logo up there. Again, this is a K guitar. Fender tuners. Eli Green hoodoo voodoo bead right there. Always on the fifth string. Original knot. Then we've got some L.A. Let me pop this out just a little bit. Some L.A. matchbooks, Bambi Chubb, some or other out of Los Angeles. Then you, you got the old glider in and eat down there by Squeal Beach, Seal Beach, California. Make sure you hit the playground and write your name on one of those tiles. Then we got K Cleaners in Hollywood. Of course, K is the, who made this guitar. This one shows up on quite a few of my guitars. House and Son. Son, House, get it? How clever. How clever, yeah. Another high five. Yeah, that never gets old, does it? House and Son Chevron Station on Beverly Boulevard, Los Angeles. And then everybody's favorite, knocked the camera around, the Chi Chi Club on Catalina Island. And we put on this, let's zoom all the way out now. I put on this license plate, this California license plate. This was before the, the colors were flipped, black and gold, 1956 with a 1962 tag on it. We cut this down, tried to use the original mounting holes and put the edge of it under the plate after it was cut out. You want to remember, if your pickup like this is magnetic and touches the plate, this will give you some... Uh, effect almost like a buck of white thing if you're beating on this and that it'll pick that up a little bit 
This pickup here is very low profile. I've used it on a few guitars, including the California Junk Pile, which is in a link right up there right about now. Uh, but these, again, these student level, student uh, type instruments with a very low uh, fretboard leave to high action. And these things fit underneath here. They're surprisingly economical. They sound great. Four holes, a hole for the wire run to a, a volume and tone pot, and then grounded back into this trapeze. I put a trapeze tail piece on it, had one of those ones that mounted the side, but this way uh, we put a pin end jack input uh, jack there and grounded everything to this. This adjustable bridge, I took the thumb screws out of it. It's as low as it can go. I've actually thought about since the, this guitar has tone bars instead of cross bracing or X bracing, you can put the your finger in here and mark this and it will tell you that the tone bars come in down here, run in here and to here. And I actually could have taken off the wood off this floating bridge and put these posts for the thumb wheels down into and mounted them to the tone bar and I think I might do that. But again, uh, pickup comes from MGB Guitar Parts, link below. Um, you have to order the cover separate from the pickup. You're going to have less than $20 into the pickup, and while you're there, you might actually get the harness for this volume and tone pot thing from Michael over there at MGB. Um, again, when you're thinking about doing one of these, you're not put, going to put a set of 50, a Gibson 57s on here unless you're Troy Murrah. Yeah, restaurant junk pile up there. Watch that one built because we had to cut the tone bars and everything else and reinforce everything. It was would have been easier to build an overpass in L.A. than do what I did to that guitar. But this all come together pretty well. It's pretty solid. A lot of gluing, a lot of of body repair and cracks and don't forget we had to cleat all this stuff but there we go that's it and don't forget when you hover your mouse right up there you are going to get the complete playlist about how this thing started and everything we have done to it No, that is not every Fred McDowell song you ever heard. And this... ...is not Cinderella Bad Seamstress Blues. Yeah, no. Whatever, I'm lost. I am completely and utterly disamazed at how much money I stuck into this. Pretty much got it for nothing and uh, I paid too much but you can see we put a lot of work into this you've watched me along the way again if you haven't the playlist up there watch everything we uh, did to this thing and have a look at all this stuff before you shell out your money now you can see I don't play but fortunately we're gonna go see Frank Goldwasser y'all know him um, and he visited the country for a bit, and he's headed back to Europe now, and I'm going to catch up with him just a couple days before um, he catches a plane, and he's going to give us a treat by playing this miserable wreck of a nightmare. So let's go see Frank and what he can do, and while you're doing that... I'm going to pull up my next victim. Ooh, look at this. Gretsch. Looks like a nice guitar. Guess again. Got all kinds of weird stickers on it. Look at that gap. Somebody took off the top, started messing with the resonator cone, and put this lipstick thing on it. Put magic more. Anyway, what y'all need to do is you need to pray for this thing. We're going to call this one the Gretsch Junk Pile. Watch for it. Hey, give me a like. Give me a subscribe. And if you don't like 
my channel for what I do at least like it for the music I give you through the artists that feel sorry for me enough to play my guitars. Okay, let's hit it. See you next time.